everybody. Today we're going to talk about loans and this is going to be a little bit longer of a video because we have a lot to cover. A loan that you pay off by making monthly or weekly payments is called an installment loan. A fixed installment loan consists of equal payments for the entirety of the loan. Loan payment formula for fixed installment loans is PMT is equal to P times R over N divided by 1 minus parentheses 1 plus r over n to the negative nt. PMT stands for the monthly payment, P is the amount of the loan, R is the interest rate, and we're going to write that as a decimal, N is the number of payments per year, which is usually 12, and then T is the time in years. As you put this into the calculator, it really matters, as always, what kind of calculator you're using because it has an order of operation built in. So if you're using a calculator that is like a scientific or handheld, you're probably going to want to put parentheses around this bottom 1 minus 1 plus r over n to the negative nt. That will make it work better. If you were using Desmos or maybe GeoGebra, then it should be able to take it exactly as it is. Example 1. Find the monthly payment for a $12,000 loan for 5 years at 8% interest and then find the total amount of interest paid for the loan. So you can tell I have a little picture that says this is a car loan application just to give us some idea of what we would use this kind of loan for. The $12,000, this is our P, so this is how much we're borrowing. 5 years, this is our T. 8 is our R, and notice in there, there is monthly, so that becomes our N. I'm going to plug all of that into our formula. So I have 12,000 times 0 0.08 over 12 divided by 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12 to the negative 12 times 5. I'm showing you ahead of time that I got 243.32, but I will show you in Desmos, because that will be an easy way to show you what that looks like when I plug it in. So I have my 12,000, 0 0.08 divided by 12, close that parenthesis, divide by, now I'm in the denominator. If it helps you to gather the information better, you can put a parenthesis there. I have 1 minus, parenthesis 1 plus, 0 0.08 over 12, close that parenthesis, then I need to the negative, so I'm going up to the exponent. I'm going to go ahead and multiply 12 times 5, which is 60. If you're not going to do that, you would need parentheses around the 12 times 5, and then close that parentheses. So here's our 243.3167. I'm going to call that 243.32. Part 2 of our question said, find the total amount of interest paid on the loan. So we've talked about interest before. What we look at is the total paid, and I'm going to subtract the amount financed. So the total paid is 243.32. We paid that for five years, and we paid 12 months in a year, and then the amount financed is the $12,000. So we paid back $14,599.20. When we subtract $12,000, we find out our interest was $2,599.20. Let's take a little detour, and let's look at that with the financial calculator. So in the financial calculator, the present value is the amount of the loan, $12,000. We're trying to figure out the payment. The future value would be zero. We would like to pay it off. Remember, our interest rate was 8%. The number of periods, we have to do the number of years times the number of payments per year. So that's a total of 60, and we're paying monthly. So I'm going to go back to the PMT, and it says I should pay 243.32. So just like we've had when we've talked about annuities, we can use the same time value money calculator to figure out loans. Now that we're reminded that we have a financial calculator to help us, we're going to use that as our strategy of how to solve these problems. So you don't have to use the big formula. You just have to know what pieces to stick into the financial calculator. This is the same thing that happens at the bank. When you sit down with someone at the bank, when you go to finance a house or you go to finance a car or take out a loan, no one is pulling out the formula. Everyone's pulling out a program. So I want to teach you to do the same thing. 
So let's say we want to finance $34,000 for a car. We have a 15% down payment and the car dealership offers us two financing choices. We can do four years for 5% interest or we can do six years at 6.25% interest. We're going to find the monthly payment for each of those loans and then we're going to figure out how much we're going to pay for the loans and which is less expensive and by how much. The first thing I need to do is figure out what the 15% down payment is. So 34,000 times 0.15 says we're putting down a $5,100 down payment. So our loan amount is 34,000 minus 5,100, which gives us 28,900. So all of our calculations will be based off of this present value of 28,900. Let's look at option one, where we have four years at 5% interest. We're starting with our present value of 28,900. We don't know the payments, so we'll come back to that. The future value is zero, because we want to pay this loan off. The interest rate was 5%, and we had four years, so we want to do four times 12 is 48. We are making monthly payments, so I'm going to hit the payment, and it says 665.55. So I'm going to write that in, 665.55. Let's look at option two. So option two, we still have a present value of 28,900 and a future value of zero. We're changing the interest rate to 6.25% and the number of payments, now that it's going to be six years, six times 12 is 72. I go to the payment and it says now we're going to pay 482.37. The payment went down because the number of years we borrowed became larger, and that's why you might choose to pick a different interest rate in a different time period because you might look at the original 665.55 and say, hey, that's too much money, so let's try a different option. So the second one gave us 482.37. So we found the monthly payment for each one. Now what we want to look at is how much will we pay in total for the loans. So the 665.55, we're going to pay that for four years, and we're paying 12 times a year. This says we'll pay a total of $31,946.40. The 482.37, we're paying for six years, and again 12 times a year, which is a total of $34,730.64. So which one is less expensive? Option one is less expensive. It's 31,000 versus 34,000. If we want to look at how much less expensive, we can subtract $34,730.64. And I'm going to take away the 31,946.40. That gives me $2,784.24. So there's our savings. Example three says you can afford a car payment of $215 per month. Your bank pre-qualifies you for a six-year loan at 5.25% interest. What is the loan amount you qualify for? So the 215 is our payment. Six years, that's our time. 5.25%, that's our R. And as always, we're gonna pay monthly. So we're gonna leave present value open. The payments, I'm gonna write negative 215 to show we're paying, so that's what the negative does. Future value is zero. The interest rate was 5.25. The periods we're doing six times 12 is 72. And then we're going to present value and it says we can afford to buy a car or get this loan for $13,254.30. So now that we've looked at cars, let's also look at mortgages. There are many types of mortgages offered by banks. The length of time can be different. The interest rate can be fixed or adjustable. For the examples that we're going to do, we're only going to do fixed rate. So that means that the interest rate is going to stay the same over the entirety of the loan. One way you can find the payment is by using the same formula we looked at with cars, that the PMT is P times R over N divided by 1 minus 1 plus R over N to the negative NT. We are, of course, going to use the financial calculator, but I just wanted to show you that we're doing the same formula for both of these types of loans. So let's start with finding the monthly payment 
for a $150,000 loan for 30 years at 5% interest. I want to point out that here I said the loan is $150,000, not the price of the house. Often when you're buying a house, you have a down payment that you're putting down. So I want to always point out that we're looking at loan versus house cost. Before we go over, let's quickly say the number of payments we're going to make all together is going to be 30 times 12, which is 360. So this will be the period that we put in this time. So we're starting with 150,000, our future value zero, our interest rate was five, our periods were 360, and I go to the payment and it says $805.23. Let's look at how much interest did we pay. The interest would be the total repaid minus the amount of the loan. So we have 805.23, we made 30 years, 12 payments a year, minus the amount we financed, which is $150,000. $805.23 for 30 years gives $289,882.8. And then I'm going to subtract the $150,000, which gives $139,882.80. So this is the interest. You can see the interest is a lot higher for a house than it was for a car. The reason for this is really the length of the loan more than the amount of the loan. So financing a longer amount of time is giving us a lot more interest. A quick note about house payments. Principal and interest is just the beginning of a house payment. You also have to pay taxes, insurance, and possibly a homeowner's association fee depending on where you live. So the actual payment per month will be significantly higher than just the loan amount. So the 805 that we just did would not be how much you would pay. It would surely be upwards of $1,000 once you add taxes and insurance. We will have down payments for homes, just like we have down payments for cars. A down payment is the amount of money a purchaser pays toward the purchase of the house that is not included in the amount of the loan. The amount of the down payment required for a loan varies by the type of loan. It really depends on the lender as well. So let's calculate how much a 15% down payment would be for a house that costs $185,000 and then let's figure out the loan amount. So to start, we're going to do 15% of 185000 This is $27,750. The amount of the loan would be 185,000 minus 27,750. So this is $157,250. So now let's find the monthly payment for this loan. So we have 157,250 at 3.25% interest for 30 years. So my present value 157,250. Looking for the payments, future value zero. 3.25% for an interest rate, 360 payments again because it's 30 years. It says the payment amount is 684.36. When you don't put 20% down on a home loan, you often are required to purchase private mortgage insurance. That's abbreviated PMI. PMI gives the lender reimbursement, which is about 20% if a borrower defaults on the loan. So what you're doing is you're buying an insurance that ensures the lender that you're going to make the payments. Because PMI is such a big deal, most of our calculations are going to use 20% for their down payment just to say like that's what we should plan to do when we're buying. Again, there is variation. There are different types of loans where you can get away from the PMI, but it is an important thing to know about and to ask your lender when you're trying to qualify because you don't want to have additional things tacked on to your monthly payment. Let's find the monthly payment for a house that costs $245,000 if the lender requires a 20% down payment and offers a 15-year mortgage at 2.95%. So we want to start by finding the loan amount. So the loan amount, and let's do it a different way this time. Instead of figuring out what 20% down is, think about if I pay 20% down, 100 minus 20 says I'm financing 80% of the price. So I'm going to do 0.80 times 245,000. This says our loan amount is $196,000.
Then this time we have 2.9% finance for 15 years. So let's say 15 times 12, I'm gonna have 180 periods for my loan. So here's 196,000, future value zero, 2.95 as my interest, and then remember we said 180 because now we've gone to a 15 year loan and we hit the payment and it says 1,348.83. Now we can look at how much we pay in interest. So our interest will be our total, which is 1,348.83 times 15 times 12 minus the amount we financed, which was $196,000. So we're paying in total 242,789.4, notice this is just for the loan, minus the 196,000. So you always wanna pay attention to, are you being asked for the amount spent on the loan? Are you asked for the amount spent on the house in total? So I'm just looking at the interest on the loan, which gives me $46,789.40. When you're paying off a loan, there's something called an amortization table that keeps track of what you're paying. The amortization table gives the details about each payment that you make. It gives the amount that goes towards interest, the amount that goes towards principal, and the new balance on the loan. So let's take an example of if we have a loan amount of $276,000 at an interest rate of 6.5%, and we're going to make monthly payments of $2,404.26. I didn't tell you here how long this loan is for, and it really doesn't matter for what I'm trying to do here. What I want to figure out is what's happening for every payment. So the first payment comes around, I had a beginning balance of $276,000, and I need to figure out how much interest do I need to pay. So we're going back to I equals PRT. So my interest is the principal, 276,000, times the interest rate, 0 0.065, and then the time is only one month, so that's 1 12th of a year. When you multiply that out, you end up with $1,495. The principal is the rest of the payment, so we made a payment of $2,404.26, but the first $1,495 is going to pay interest on the loan. So the remaining $909.26 goes towards the principal. So your new balance is the $276,000 minus the amount you paid towards the principal, which is $275,000. $90.74. The second month comes around. Here's payment number two. My new balance is $275,090.74. To find the interest, I'm going back to I equals PRT. So the I is my new principal, $275,090.74, times that same rate, 0.065 times the time, which is 1 over 12. This time, I have $1,490.07. So you see that the interest went down a little, just like our beginning balance went down a little. So over time, the interest is decreasing, the principal is increasing, and the balance is getting paid off. So now we know our interest payment. To find our principal payment, we go back to how much we pay, $2,404.26 and we subtract the interest we just paid. So now our principal payment was $914.19. So we can see our principal went up just a little. Now our new balance would be $275,090.74 minus the principal, 914.19. So our new principal is $274,176.55. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to bring that new balance over. So 274, 176.55. And I go back to my I equals PRT. So 274, 176.55. Again, times 0 0.065 times 1 over 12. I get $1,485.12. Again, it went down a little bit. And then my principal payment means I'm going to subtract that 1,485.12 
from my payment that is always the same, which is $2,404.26. So let's subtract. This says now I paid $919.14 toward my principal. To get my new balance, I'm going to subtract this 919 14 from the 274, 176, 55, which gives me $273,257.41. So this is a long process. If this was a 30-year loan, we would have to do this 360 times. Luckily, there are programs that do that for us. But what I do want to point out is what's happened so far. We paid $2,404.26 three times. So we've paid $7,212.78. This is what we paid. What did we get out of that? What principal have we paid? Well, how much did this go down from the beginning, 276000 to the end, 273257 almost $3,000. So you can see you are spending a lot of interest, especially at the beginning of the loan, and then that will decrease as time goes on. So most of your payment is interest, the rest is principal, and over time we can pay this off. We can extend this to look at credit cards, but only in specific cases. So let's say we had a credit card debt of $9,400 and we pay 24.99% annual interest on the card. This is not unheard of, it's actually pretty normal. So we want to figure out, well, what would we want to do if we want to pay this credit card off in two years? How much should we pay per month? We're going to assume that we don't use this card for anything else and we make equal payments. So the idea that we're not changing it is what makes it fixed. So we have a fixed rate and we have fixed payments and that's why we're allowed to do this for credit cards. Usually things vary, but we're being very specific. So this says, what's our present value? 9,400. What's our interest rate? 24.99. We are looking for two years. So this will be our period, which will be two times 12, which is 24. So we're gonna use our financial calculator to figure out how much is this gonna cost us. So here's our 9,400. Again, we're trying to pay it off, so that's a zero. High interest, 24.99% periods this is 24 and we're looking for our payment it says 501.65 so 501.65 was our payment the bad news here is how much interest are we paying if you look at we're going to pay 501.65 for two years 12 months a year minus the 94 hundred dollars that we owed this is twelve thousand thirty nine dollars six cent minus ninety four hundred this says we paid $2,639.60 over that two year period. So that is a very high amount of interest for a short amount of time. So it really is important to pay attention to what percent are you paying on interest. Lastly, there's a lot more to know about credit cards. I have a separate video about finance charges, minimum payments, average daily balances. So if you want to learn more, please go take a look at that. I think it's important to educate yourself about how credit cards work because I think we all have them. So it's nice to know what happens as we use them. How are they calculating the charges? What does it mean to have a minimum payment? So go take a look at it if you want to know more.